The Lord be with you. And, and also with you. you. Let us pray. For God, the strength of all who put their trust in you, mercifully accept the pray our prayers, and because in our weakness we can do nothing good without you, give us the help of your grace, that in keeping your commandments we may please you both in will and deed. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. Thus says the Lord, Cursed are those who trust in mere mortals and make mere flesh their strength, whose hearts turn away from the Lord. They shall be like a shrub in the desert, and shall not see when relief comes. They shall live in the parched places of the wilderness, in an uninhibited salt land. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by water, sending out its roots by the stream. It shall not fear when he comes, and its leaves shall stay green. In the year of drought, it is not anxious, and it does not cease to bear fruit. The hurt is devious above all else. It is perverse. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, test the mind and search the heart to give to all according to their ways according to the fruit of their doings. The word of the Lord. A reading from Psalm 1, to be read responsibly by half verse. Happy are those who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of the sinners, nor sat in the streets of the Lord. Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on this law day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in the season with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like chaff which the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes. Nor the sinner in the house of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous. But the way of the wicked is soon. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. That is what was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Now, if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our proclamation has been in vain, and your faith has been in vain. We are even found to be misrepresenting God, because we testify of God that he raised Christ, whom he did not raise, if it is true that the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, and you are still in your sins then those also who have died in Christ have perished. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus came down with the twelve apostles and stood on a level place with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea, Jerusalem, and the coast of Tyre and Sidon. They had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all in the crowd were trying to touch him for power came out of him and healed all of them. 
Then he looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you, revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven, and for that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise Lord. Please pray with me. Come, Holy Spirit, and fill the hearts of your faithful, and kindle in us the fire of your love. Send forth your Spirit, and we shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit you instruct the hearts of the faithful, grant that by that same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise and ever enjoy his consolations through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. Good morning. Many of you know that I really like to hike, and I haven't hiked out of the state since COVID reared its ugly head and shut down our hike to Olympic National Park in the spring of 2020. But like in all things, there is a blessing to be had. I was forced to look at Florida in a new way, searching for hiking trails here. And as an added bonus, there were no airfares or hotel fees. <laughs> Many can be enjoyed in just a short drive, De Leon Springs, Rock Springs, Hontoon Island, and New, New Smyrna's own Doris Leaper Preserve, just minutes from my house. My daughter bought me a Florida's Fabulous Trail Guide on one of our outings, and I've replaced my National Parks Guide with this volume and now dream of Florida instead of other states. It is a blessing. My dog Lucy and I recently hit the trail in the preserve. We took the West Trail, one I'd never taken before, and I consider it a huge blessing to be able to hike for six or seven miles, just a short distance from the house. The trails are pretty clearly marked there, although I have gotten turned around and lost a couple times. So I was being very careful and observant on this new West Trail. I had my phone, I had water for both of us, and the trail was a one-way mountain bike trail, so I was pretty confident that if we stayed on the path, we'd be fine. After about an hour and a half, we came to a crossroads, and one trail was marked TH, back to the trail. So I figured we'd walked far enough. It was getting late in the afternoon, so we headed off back to the trailhead which I knew was southeast. But the trail kept switching back to the northeast, and then to the northwest, and then due west, and then due east, and it, it seemed to skirt around, avoiding the southeasterly direction that I knew we needed to take to get back to the trailhead. So after about an hour and a half, I started getting a little concerned. Had, had I gotten lost? Had I taken a wrong turn? Did I get turned around? Was I just not paying attention? Then we came up on a passel of wild piggies that were rooting in the dirt. We, we all stopped for a good 15 seconds and just stared at each other. And then everybody scattered when Lucy bolted in their direction. I had no idea where I was. And although I had been talking with God for most of the day, I now shared my concerns about our whereabouts as if he didn't know. At one point, I just wanted to quit. I don't want to walk anymore. But how 
was that a choice? The only choice I had was to trust that not only was he with us, but that we had indeed taken the right path. And then we hit a fire road, a blessing indeed, and then turned the corner and we could see the trailhead off in the distance. So as I reflected on that hike, I realized it was a lot like my life. Setting out in one direction, twisting and turning wherever the path led, wanting to quit, or at least go in a different direction. Not really understanding where I was or how long I was going to be there, and often plagued with uncertainty and confusion and distress. I was not really aware of the power of Christ in my life. I mean, I was a believer, but I didn't have a personal relationship with the living God for many years. So often I remained in the woods, if you will, and not really seeing or understanding the many blessings along the way. Like the blessings I saw that hiking day, the red-orange mushroom, the piggies, the cabbage palm fronds that had just been hacked, the canopy of trees, the beautiful warm weather that day, and our ability to hike. Well, in today's readings, the power of blessings abounds. We find two similar blessings in Jeremiah and Psalm 1, and then four Beatitudes from the Sermon on the Plain in Luke. Blessings. Literally, the word Beatitude means blessings. It's from the Latin beatus, which means both happy and blessing. I always thought the word beatitude meant the attitude you were supposed to be in. You know, be attitude. I know now that it means blessing. And in Hebrew, blessing or baruch means to increase in joy and peacefulness. Cool. So when we say, bless you, we're actually saying, may you increase in joy and peacefulness. How cool is that? Well, in the two blessings in Jeremiah and Psalm 1, we hear, Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, and happy are they whose delight is in the law of the Lord. We have a pretty clear path there. Trust in the Lord follow his law. And both blessings continue with, they shall be like a, tree, like a tree planted by water. I mentioned a few weeks ago that I got this Bible called The Message, a pretty wild translation. And here is how the verse from Jeremiah reads in this version. It uses everyday language. Blessed is the man who trusts in God, the woman who sticks with God. They are like trees planted in Eden. Eden, where we live free from shame, basking in his love, enjoying his many blessings. So then we jump to Jesus delivering his sermon on the plain in Luke. There are a lot of people present, a great multitude, it says. Everyone was looking to be healed. And it states, quote, power came out of him and healed them. As Max Lucado observed, many of those healed would never say thank you, but he healed them anyway. Most would be more concerned with being healthy than with being holy, but he healed them anyway. And some had come to him that day they would turn on him in just a few months. But he healed them anyway. He had compassion for all of them, like all of us. And he shared his power with them and delivered blessings, beatitudes upon them. A Hebrew website that I consulted states that there is power in blessing and that the true power of blessing has been overlooked. Well, it is a common and widespread practice that we bless, 
So it may seem trite to some. I mean, the word blessing, blessed, bless, has been printed on everything from coffee cups to garden flags. So it can seem overused and ineffective, and we bless each other with a banner of death's enjoyment. Yet God's power is central to the act of blessing. Almost every Jewish prayer begins with Baruch Atta Adonai. Blessed are you, Lord. Now, we know that God is all powerful and perfectly self sufficient, and He certainly does not need mankind's blessing or anything from us, but He chose us. He wanted fellowship with individuals who have free will. In return, his simple presence, not so simple, is a reward that we could never earn or achieve. So in blessing God, we give him honor for his grace towards us. And then we live in the grip of grace because he'll never let us go. To bless and to be blessed. That is a fundamental part of our relationship with God, as well as our relationship with others. Blessings help us recognize and acknowledge God's grace in our lives at any moment, blessing our food, our work, our leisure. A friend of mine at Prayer Group Monday morning shared how she now blesses her medications so that they work for his good in her body, just as we pray over the food we eat. A blessing is like a, a humble confession, recognizing that we are not in control and we are not self-sufficient. We depend on God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you, <laughs> for every aspect of our being and our world. As all of these blessings draw us closer to God, Scripture tells us that He will draw closer to us. In this divided, broken, and pandemic-ridden world, that's good news indeed. And like Christ's power at the Sermon on the Plain, the power of blessing is not something we control or we dictate, Oh, I bless you. Mm. It's all God's, and it's all freely given. We increase in joy and peacefulness when we bless God and give Him honor. Blessed are you, God. It is not only a declaration of trust, it is the greatest hope for the Lord to reign over all circumstances, not just here in the church building. And as we are the church, when the church has left the building, we must continue to bless God, and His presence increases in us. <coughs> He's increasing goodness in our lives minute by minute. <coughs> well, Jesus shares four blessings following the healings in Luke. And in the message translation, this section is titled, You Are Blessed. And the first two blessings read like this from the message. So kind of compare them with what you have in the bulletin today. You are blessed when you have lost it all. God's kingdom is there for the finding. You are blessed when you are ravenously hungry. Then you are ready for the messianic meal. When we realize how empty the world's ways are and how weak and needy we really are with no control in this life, we get a glimpse of the enormity of God's love and provision for each of us. How much we need that personal relationship with the living God. Psalm 1 forces us to make that choice. It says, serve God and succeed, Follow the world and lose. Now the author knows that life is not that simple. In this world, the righteous don't always get ahead, and the ungodly do not always fail. But
But following God, accepting His grace, serving Him, embracing His truth, then we, quote, find refreshment and fruitfulness to life, as it says in verse 3. Following the world leaves us as stable as a dust storm. Well, God walks us into the woods and He walks us back out, day in and day out. No matter how unsure, confused, or distressed we may be at any given moment. No matter if we recognize the power of his love and blessing or not. I know he was watching over me and Lucy as we entered the forest and followed the trail. I know just getting to make that hike was a blessing, increasing my joy and peacefulness after we saw the trail <laughs> So I bless the Lord, O oh my soul, just like we all do at every Eucharist, and his presence and power increases in our lives. We bless the Lord again at the dismissal because we are dependent on his goodness, his mercy, his everlasting love as we go out into the world, knowing that we are his, and he will never let us go. What a Valentine's Day gift we have been given. What a blessing we be. Please turn to page 114 in the Book of Common Prayer and pray with me the ironic blessing that Moses, God gave Moses explaining how we are to bless, how God blesses his people. It's from the Book of Numbers. Page 114 in the Book of Common Prayer. So, with gusto. Ready? The Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. 